Making the first customer mold and test shots. Welcome to another episode. In the last episode in this series, which is about a month ago, I showed you the mold that I was going to be making for a customer. Then I got involved with making the face shields for healthcare workers. I'm now done with that project. So I'm back to working on this mold. And in this episode, I'm going to show you a little bit about making the mold. And then I'm going to take you to the injection molding machine, show you how I set up a mold the first time I run it, and then show you some issues that uh, I ran into with this mold. So let's head to the workshop. I haven't shown this before. This is a case for uh, the GoPro that has an air blade in the front. The air blade is fed with this air supply here. And what that does is it blows the coolant away. It basically creates a, an air buffer between the, the front glass and the coolant. So when the coolant comes and tries to hit the glass, it's blown to the side. So this is what allows me to take video even when the coolant is splashing all over the place. I'll put a link to this below. I've had this for a while and it's worked really, really well. I'm really happy with it. I have a GoPro Hero 8, I think it is. I'll have to look it up. Uh, Hero Black uh, inside there. I don't remember which model. The bandsaw cut edge is rough and it's not going to be pre predictable and reproducible for edge finding. So I want to clean up the edge. I move the edge, the, uh, the mill over until it uh, just barely touches. And then I can turn on the coolant, move it over about 10 thousandths, and then use the hand jog wheel to clean up the edge. <laughs> I jogged down using the uh, one thousandths per detent and then switched to one ten thousandths per detent. Okay, it says 3.9728, so I'll type in 3.9728, 3.9728, 3.9728, Z for G54, F1, and there we go. Okay, so we'll go to list programs and now we'll go to cavity, select program, and time to hit circle start. But first I'm going to do 5% rapids. This is using a 32 thousandths of an inch diameter flat end mill to ramp down and cut the slot. And it's running at uh, 30,000 RPM. You may have heard it uh, ramp up at the beginning. I'm using a 1 8 inch diameter ball end mill to cut the sprue for the plastic to enter the mold. And this is also running at 30,000 RPM. Okay, 
there's the uh, the first mold half. Uh, it turned out well. Let's check on the pins. Oh yeah, that's a really nice fit. Uh, I cut this to be uh, half a thousandth over 0.25 inches, and uh, it, it uh, I feel a little bit of air compressing when I push it in, so that's a perfect fit. Here are the two mold halves. This is the uh, cavity and this is the core. Uh, cavity mainly because there's more on this side than there is this side. I've got the runner here and then there's a tiny gate here which may not be easy to see. These are to pry it open and then these are where the pins go in. So I've got one of the pins here and the thing that I was showing before is the pin goes in and kind of springs together. But what the uh, pins do is ensure that uh, these stay aligned and it gives me perfect alignment this way. Now the pins are a little tight right now so I might ream one of the holes so that they, they come apart a little bit easier. But uh, right now it's a pretty much perfect fit. I did make one part from the mold and it had a few issues. One is that uh, cosmetically you can see the, the mill lines uh, on one side, but the other issue is that it was hard to get out of the mold. Now, quite often, one of the reasons it's hard to get out of the mold is because in this case, I skipped a step that I normally have, which is that when I first uh, mill the, the mold, there is a little bit of a burr usually left on the sides here. And so what I do is use a piece of sandpaper to basically sand it uh, down a little bit and that gets rid of the burrs. And it doesn't take that much sanding to get rid of the burrs. Um, what I do is, you know, once the, the tooling marks go away, then it's usually pretty good. So I'll just go ahead and do this for a little bit. A few more minutes and it should be good. And then for the other side, I'll get rid of the tooling marks just by sanding this as well. So I'm going to go off and uh, sand these and then come back after I've uh, sanded all the way down. I currently have polypropylene in the machine. So the first thing I want to do because I'm going to switch to polystyrene is purge the machine. So I have the mold in here cocked to the side a little bit so that the nozzle can be compressed and let the plastic out and then purge it. So it's, heat enough, it's hot enough now so I can do the first purge. And I cut the uh, pressure way down a little bit more than I need it. But uh, one thing that you can see once it comes back up is that what came out is the, the clear uh, or the natural polypropylene. So I'm going to keep purging that until I get the styrene uh, as the main ingredient. And then I'm going to try the mold. So here's a few cycles, uh, six altogether. The first one and then the last one. And you can see after six cycles, this is pretty much uh, uh, mostly polystyrene. So I'm ready to go and actually shoot the mold now. I don't know how much injection pressure this is going to need for the, the shot. So right now it's at about 40 PSI. And from experience, I'd say that I probably want to start at 60 PSI and then I'm gonna work my way up until I get the, the mold to fill. Okay, so I just need to add a little bit of plastic and then I'll go ahead and uh... So one of the things I need to do is I need to get some uh, airline run in here and the compressor in the next room so I don't have to pause like that when the compressor starts. Let's see uh, how that did. So. Let me pull this open and you can see it's not a full shot, which is, you know, actually kind of what I expected. I didn't expect it to fill. Now, the other thing is, you know, getting this part out is a little bit challenging. So uh, one of the things is I have a dental pick that I'm going to try to see. Yep, that makes it easier to pull it out. And I'll see how it, it's like uh, when I fill it completely. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is turn the temperature up a little bit. I had it at 440 degrees Fahrenheit. And so now I'm going to set it to 440. I realize I'm adjusting more than one parameter at a time, but uh, 
you know, that's not unusual. So I'm guessing, you know, 80 should be okay. And I'll try that. Now, I have this cycle set a little bit longer than it needs to, to be, so it's currently set to 10 seconds. I'm going to change it to 6, because I think 6 with pressure to the mold should be enough. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so definitely need uh, more temperature on this and probably more pressure. Okay, so I'm going to heat it up a little bit more. I'm going to take it to 460. And then I'm also going to go to 90 PSI over here. Make sure I close the, uh, the mold house. I have forgotten to do that sometimes, and when I do that, um, I get plastic coming out all over the place. Okay, so six seconds is enough. Uh, you can't see it. Let me uh, zoom out a little bit. So you'll be able to see it next time. But basically, when the, the ram stops moving is uh, well before it gets to 60 seconds. So let's see how this one turned out. Okay, still running short. Um, so I'll turn it up to 100 PSI and see how that comes out. Yeah, and it feels like it's going to be hard to get this out of the mold. So I may need to come up with uh, some type of ejection mechanism to get it out of the mold. Every time I run a new mold though, this is the process that I go to. So there you can see we have a full shot. Now the question is, what's going to be involved in getting this out? So I'm going to go down to the workbench. And let's see what's involved in getting this out. So first I'm going to try pulling on the gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of hard. All right, I'm going to have to think about this and figure out a way of get, getting this out. Um, this uh, using the pick is, as you can see, it it actually pulled off some of the plastic. So, you know, now at this point, I, I just need to get this out. Yeah, there, this this may be the way to do it. Okay, so it may just be that I need a little bit of practice on how best to do this. So let me try this again. Oops, all right. I don't know if you just saw that, but I forgot to close the, <laughs> the mold. And this is what happens if you forget to close the mold. You end up with a mess. And it kind of sticks to itself as well. <laughs> but that's what it looks like. And, you know, it's cool enough so I can kind of pull on it and get it out. But that's why you want to uh, close the mold. And, you know, I'm more likely to do that while I'm filming, but I do it sometimes even when I'm not filming it. So let's try this again. And close the mold. Okay. Uh. Okay, so I have too much pressure now. And the reason I know I have too much pressure is because I'm getting flash on here. Um, and if you see there, um, this right here 
indicates that the, the mold halves came apart a little bit and then there's a, it, it actually came above the mold sides. So let me try to get this out of the mold. Yeah, and flash. So I dropped the pressure on here. And you know, with molds like this, it's just a matter of trial and error, uh, trying to get the right combination of, of all the parameters. Once I get the right parameters, you know, then this is something where I want to record it. And uh, therefore, the next time, it's reproducible. So here I have a full shot. And you can see that the gate comes off really easily. Let's see if I can pry this out. Yeah, I'm definitely going to want to create some type of ejector mechanism on this because this is a little too hard to get out at the moment. But, and you know, I'm putting, uh, creating some damage on the back of it. So what I'm going to have to do is go back and uh, design a uh, ejector mechanism because um, I think it's, you know, shrinking around here, which makes it hard to pull out. And then also with the pins in there, you know, we're getting some shrinking and all those forces make it really hard to get it out of the mold. So I'm going to go back uh, and do some design work on this and probably come up with uh, you know, a couple of ejectors that come, you know, on the sides near the pin. Um, I'm not going to use, probably not going to use ejector pins. I'll probably use um, ejector ring or plates or something like I did uh, in a previous episode. In the next episode, I'm going to continue with this project uh, by making a mechanism to eject the part from the mold so that um, I don't have to use the dental pick. I'm not really sure what that's going to be yet, but I'll show that in the next episode. I'll make another mold and then test it out to see how well it works. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below. Stay healthy and I'll see you next time.